Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm gonna to share with you my top 10 tips for Lightroom beginners. Theme tune. Do 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 do. One, two, three, four, five. Once they caught a fish alive. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. I don't even think that's the song. Anyway, so Lightroom is massively powerful, but when you get started, it can be a little bit daunting. So these are my top 10 tips to get you started with some really good things to think about. And luckily, for each one of these things, I have a video, so they're gonna pop up here, I think, or maybe here, so you can click on that and learn all about it. So here we go. Number one, workflow. So whenever you, when you start using Lightroom, first of all, figure out the best Workflow. This is basically the organization of your photos, how you bring them in, where you store them, if you take them to Photoshop or any, anything else, bring them back in, export and save. What is your workflow? Get this right from the beginning and it is going to save you so much time in the future. Just ask any photographer that's been doing this for a long time. So that is number one. Number two, before you do any of your edits at all, find your selects and your rejects. Learn to go through all of your images so you're only editing the images that you really need to. Don't waste time. Number three, don't just go into Lightroom and hit auto. In my experience, Lightroom always overexposes everything a lot. However, that's because it's looking at the entire tonal range of it and it pushes it for where it thinks you can go. Remember, it's a computer. It doesn't think, it doesn't have a feeling, it can't actually see your image. So if you do click auto so you can see kind of where the sliders move around, then reset the image and then take that as an idea and use it to help you learn how to use that basic panel, okay? So don't just click auto, then reset it and then start doing all of the edits yourself. It will make you a better editor in the future. Number four, five, four, practice is everything. So being an editor is kind of like playing a sport. If you want to be better at sport, you practice. If you want to be a better dancer, you practice. If you want to be better at soccer or baseball or football, whatever, you throw more, you kick harder, you run faster, whatever you need to do. And you keep on going over time, over time, and you get better. Same thing for photo editing practice. And this is no joke. I have and still do, but I used to a lot more, bring in a photograph that I wanted to edit, for example, do a beauty retouch. I would then do a full edit on it, get it to the point that I was happy, reset the whole thing and do it again. I would then reset it again. And no joke, I would do it five, six, seven, or even more times of the same image kind of the same edit. Each time I'd learn how to do it faster and faster and faster so that now when an image comes in, I can analyze it quickly and I can just get right to it and edit and be at the final image in no time. So don't forget, practice. It's a technique that you're learning and it's your technique. Okay, that's it for practice. Number five, this is really big. The tone curve is your creative best friend. People often come into tone curve and go, well, it kind of does this and I make an S curve and it will be good for you know, contrast. It's not, it's incredible. Learn to use it in RGB mode. You learn to use it in as many ways as you possibly can because it is so powerful and can change the feel and the story of an image in just a few clicks. So click on the image wherever it is and learn all about the tone curve. Okay, so you've learned about the tone curve and everything. Now learn how to build your own presets. So when you find something that you like, turn it into a preset or buy somebody else's presets and have a go. But remember, don't just click on a preset and be done. There, it's always a starting point that you can work with. So remember, use presets. They are so powerful and a time saver. Don't miss out on those. Okay, that was number six. We're now gonna go for number seven. Learn each module independently. So don't just go basic panel and then always then go to tone curve, then go to HSL, because it's in that order, which is awesome. 
But you may be missing things because you've already essentially layered everything up. So learn the basic panel, then reset it all. Just get your exposure right, then just work on the tone curve for a while, then reset it all. Then go to HSL and reset it. Then go to your split toning and reset that. And then your lens corrections, reset that, and your calibration and all those things. And then when you go into doing the full edits, you then learn how it all interacts with each other. So again, take your time and practice, but learn each module separately. Okay. This is really important for number eight. Do everything that you can inside Lightroom. Now, what, what I mean for this is file management, essentially. Learn, if you've been having your photographs in a file on your computer, then you'd go and move them around, and then you'd copy and paste things, then you'd send them to friends or whatever, and then you'd move them onto a hard drive. Stop. As soon as you get into Lightroom, it's kind of point one. Learn a great workflow. If you need to move your images, from your computer to a hard drive, do it within Lightroom. Because that way all of your settings are saved and Lightroom keeps track of it all. So wherever you can, import into Lightroom, organize inside Lightroom, edit inside Lightroom, maybe send it to Photoshop and bring it back into Lightroom, then export from Lightroom, and then you can even share to the web from Lightroom if you want. But do as much as you can inside it, it is your friend. It's amazing. Okay. Number nine, I love this one and I think that a lot of people get stuck in Lightroom with the technical side of things like, oh, what does this slider really do? And what does this really do? And technically, how does it do it? Now, I've made tutorials on all the different elements within Lightroom, every single module, so you can learn the technical side of things. But this is what is important. Forget it all. Learn it, forget it. Then see an image, think about the feeling, think about the story you want to tell. I have a whole video talking about this and then go in and edit. Remember, this is not a competition for who knows the most um, techniques. This is who can create the best edit on an image. And that brings me to my final one. Number 10, this is really important. Lightroom is all about the photos, not about the photographer, okay? And why I say that is this. It's not about going into the develop module and using every single slider and how much you can change it. And as a beginner um, or even an intermediate, intermediate user, what often happens is we use before and after a lot. Oh, how big is the change? Oh, I did this and it's a huge change. How far can I push the image? That's not the idea, it's not a competition. The idea is what is the best edit I can do on an image to make it the best it possibly can be for the purpose it's gonna be used for. Edit for the image. Don't edit because you have some mad skill that you just learned. Do that in private, practice all of those things, push your images, but when you actually do an edit, think about the purpose of it and what is the best for the photograph. I've done edits for clients where I've literally moved three sliders and that's been it. It's taken me three minutes, that's it. I could have messed around for an hour, but the three minute version, the three sliders, was the best edit for that photograph. So that is my top 10 tips for beginners in Lightroom. Now, if you liked this video, please head over, no, please just subscribe. I've got loads more videos going. Remember, I have loads of tutorials all about Lightroom on my channel, so just follow that. Also, head over to photosincolor.com. You can get a free guide to taking better travel photos and loads of other things too. My name's Ed Gregory, who we've never met before. You can always contact me either via Snapchat, clearly Ed, or you can even get in touch with me on the Facebook page, which is, fo which is facebook.com forward slash photos in color. Theme tune. Long today. Done. <laughs>